My neighbor got a dog. I don't think it's actually a dog. My neighbor Jack adopted a border collie two weeks ago. At least, that's what I thought. Now I'm not so sure. I first saw Toto out on a walk. He was sniffing some of the flowers growing next to the sidewalk as Jack waited, scrolling through his cell phone. Wow, you got a dog, I called out, waving. I certainly did. His name's Toto. Border Collie Mix. Toto stopped sniffing the flowers and glanced up at me. I'd encountered many dogs on this street, and they ran the whole gaunt of dog greetings, from curious sniffs to protective growling to jumping up and licking my face. None of them just stared at me like Toto did. Wow, he's beautiful, and so big for a collie mix. I began to crouch down. Can I pet him? Oh, actually, he's a little shy, Jack said. Having a little trouble adapting, you know? But I'm sure he'll warm up in a few days. He tugged gently on the leash. Come on, Toto. I watched as they walked away from me. The next time I saw Toto, I was dropping something off for Jack. He'd lent me his drill for a home improvement project, and I'd never returned it. But when I rang the doorbell, I didn't hear the usual barking I did with other dog owners. Instead, just the pat, pat, pat of feet against wood. And then Toto's face was in the glass instead of the door, staring out at me. Not barking, or growling, or pawing at the door. Just staring. Before I could think anything of it, Jack's footsteps sounded through the hall, and the door swung open. Hey, Amir. Just wanted to give you this back. Oh, thanks. Hey, why don't you come in? I'm just about to pull some cookies out of the oven. Jack was an avid baker, and I couldn't say no to his cookies. I stepped inside and followed the warm cinnamon smell to the kitchen. Toto followed behind me. But I could tell something was... off. I don't have a dog, but I have a lot of friends with dogs. And we can always tell the dog is coming our way when we hear that mistakable clicking sound of its nails against the floor. It was instinctual at this point. Hear that sound and scarf down the last bit of steak, or put the chocolate out of reach, or get ready to get licked on the face. This dog... didn't make that sound. No clicking of nails against the wooden floor. Just... sort of a dull... Thump, 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 with each step. I glanced back at Toto, and I realized his movements were a little odd too. His steps were a little jerky, a little stiff, a little clumsy for a dog of his build. He wasn't limping or anything, just overall the movements didn't look quite right. Hope you like snickerdoodles, Jack said, pulling the tray out of the oven. Wow, they look amazing. My Nana's recipe, he said proudly. Ate these every day after school. Fond memories. I picked up a cookie and took a bite. But I had an audience. Toto was staring at me. Well, that wasn't weird. Dogs love to stare at people food. I was just about to ask Jack if these cookies were safe for dogs. But his phone went off. Oh, sorry man, gotta take this. He muttered as he disappeared down the hall and into the office. I sat down at the kitchen table. Toto didn't move, just stared at me from across the kitchen. Weirdly, he wasn't licking his lips or anything as he stared hungrily at the cookie in my hand. You're a weird dog, but I like you, I said. The dog continued to stare. I'm sorry, I can't give you any cookie. I don't know if they're safe. More staring. You're gonna like it here. It's a good neighborhood. He canted his head, and as he did, I realized there was something off. Something about the way the light bounced off his fur. It was a little too shiny, a little too perfectly groomed for a rough and tumble collie dog. I squinted at him, studying him, and then I heard something. A quiet, rushing sound, like a whisper, and I, I guess I must have been imagining it, but it almost sounded like... God, it, it almost sounded like someone whispering. Help me. I stared at the dog. Sorry about that, Jack said, wandering back in. I just had to take that. It was a new client, and we're trying to keep him. How do you like the cookies? They were amazing, I said, standing up. But I've got to go. 
Mandy and the girls will be back from softball anytime now, and I'm supposed to have dinner ready. Oh, uh, dinner duty, huh? He motioned at the snickerdoodles. Take some back with you. Say you made them from scratch. Mandy knows I can't bake like that, but thanks. I stepped out the front door, waving back at Jack and Toto. Jack waved, grinning. The dog just stared at me as usual. But this time, his black, glassy eyes sent chills down my spine. I swear, there's something fucked up about that dog. The girls were asleep, and Mandy and I were enjoying some much-needed quality time. We sat on the couch with a bottle of wine, an episode of The Office in the background as we talked about our days. Mandy was surprisingly interested in the story. So, you've never heard him bark? No. And he walks weird, and just stares at you? Yup. She shook her head, laughing. That does sound really weird. Even weirder than Aunt Polly's dog. Remember her? Is that the one that makes the weird screeching sound? Yeah. We laughed about it, hung out some more, and then eventually went to sleep. But even an hour after Mandy had fallen asleep, around midnight, I was lying wide awake, thinking about that fucking dog. And then I decided to do something really stupid. I probably never would have done it if I hadn't drunk three glasses of wine. But with liquid courage, I crept downstairs and slipped out of the house. The lights were still on in Jack's house. When I got there, I ducked behind his hydrangea and peered into the window. Golden light spilled into the living room from the kitchen. Jack was sitting on the couch, looking at his laptop. Toto was lying on the floor, his black eyes glittering in the low light. Surprisingly, he didn't seem to detect my presence at all. After several minutes, Jack shut the laptop and disappeared down the hallway. Toto watched him, but didn't follow. I was about to go back home, and then I saw it. Toto stood up, and then using the couch to balance himself, he stood up again. He was standing on two legs. I watched with wide eyes as he walked into the kitchen, stood in front of the refrigerator, and then a small opening appeared, smack dab in the middle of Toto's chest. A human hand came out. It grasped the refrigerator door, pulled it open, greedily grabbed some food off the shelf. Then the dog sat back down on the floor, cross-legged, and the hand holding a leftover sandwich disappeared into the hole. I stared through the window, my heart pounding in my chest. It's a costume. There's a person in there. I hightailed it out of there, wrapped myself in blankets and lay next to my wife, wide awake, thoughts rolling through my head. I didn't expect to fall asleep, but I must have, because the next thing I knew, a loud noise woke me from a deep sleep. Knocking. Someone was knocking on my front door. Bleary-eyed, I hobbled down the stairs, I looked through the peephole, and saw Jack, standing on my front porch, looking incredibly angry. I don't know what he wants, but I think he knows that I know. That, for some reason, he's keeping what appears to be a full-grown man in his house, wearing a dog costume and pretending to be a dog. Because when I went over there that night, still tipsy from the wine, I totally forgot he has security cameras. Update. I decided to ignore Jack. Since I knew he was keeping a man in his house dressed as a dog, I figured that was my safest bet. Besides, it was almost 2 a.m. He'd just assume I was asleep, right? I know you're in there, Amir. Open up! He sounded angry. Really angry. I shrunk against the door, holding my breath, trying not to make a sound. Amir! He knocked for a few more minutes, then finally I heard his footsteps retreat off the porch. I stood there for several more minutes, in case he came back. Then I checked all the locks and crept back upstairs. For the rest of the night, I tossed and turned, trying to figure out what to do. I should just call the police. But what if it's consensual? What if that man, for whatever reason, agreed to pretend to be Jack's dog? Does he self-identify as a dog? Is it a furry thing? But then I thought of how angry Jack sounded. And when dawn broke, I called the cops. They didn't believe me at first, but finally they agreed to go over to Jack's and check it out. I ran over to the living room window and parted the blinds, staring out across the street at Jack's house. By the time the police car pulled up, 
I could hear Mandy's steps above me, but I remained glued to the window, watching. Two officers, a tall woman and a plump man, exited the vehicle and stepped up onto the porch. I saw the woman raise her fist and knock. I waited, holding my breath. But as the door cracked open, I heard it, clear as day, barking. Jack began talking to the officers, his expression darkening, and then a blur of brown and white fur shot out. My jaw dropped as the dog leapt up into the officers. A pink tongue shot out and it began licking them, letting out happy yelps. No. It was a real dog. It had to be. It was considerably smaller than the two officers. No way an adult man could fit in there. And it was barking and licking and jumping around. The dog suit I'd seen yesterday hadn't even been able to open its mouth. What are you doing? I turned around to see Mandy there staring at me. Oh, uh... I sat down and explained everything to her that happened last night. But I could tell she didn't believe me. I couldn't really blame her. After all, she could see a very live, very real dog jumping around Jack and the police officers. So you're saying you think, in the middle of the night, he let the dog man go and adopted a real one? I know it sounds crazy, but it does sound crazy. And you shouldn't go calling the cops on our neighbors, unless something really bad is happening. If our house is on fire, or if someone breaks in, you think Jack is going to want to help us? But I saw it. It was a person. I swear. You were drunk. You probably just saw the dog jumping up while Jack was behind him or something, so it looked like a hand sticking out. Mandy, I swear. She shook her head and walked out of the room. Soon after, the officers came by and confirmed it. Jack was in possession of a large, very friendly, 100% real collie dog. That son of a bitch, I whispered, staring out the window as they pulled away. I knew the truth, even if everyone else thought I was crazy. I know what I saw. That's why, later that night, when I saw Jack's car pull out, I snuck out of the house and crept into his backyard. Now that I remembered the security cameras, I was careful to forge a path that avoided them. But as soon as I stepped up onto the deck... The collie was scratching at the back door, barking at me. Shh! I tried the door. Locked, of course. Swearing, I made my way around to the side door. It was locked, too. I'll have to try tomorrow. Maybe I can come over for more cookies? I asked the police to keep my name out of the whole thing. Maybe he isn't certain it was me. I shook my head. Yeah, right. Of course he knows it was me. I started towards the front of the house. I turned around. A rattling, metallic sound. And then... It was coming from the basement. I ran over to the Bilko doors. They were locked, but with a padlock. Thankfully, I had a pair of bolt cutters in my garage. I crept back home, grabbed the bolt cutters, and made my way back into the yard. With a swift downward motion... The door was unlocked. I lifted the door open. Two black, glinting eyes stared back at me. It was him, the man in the dog suit, sitting in the center of the basement, a collar wrapped around his neck, the chain fastened to one of the support holes. I grabbed the bolt cutters and ran down the stairs. I'm going to get you out of here, I whispered, rushing towards him. No reaction. He just stared at me, still as a statue, his plastic dog fur shining in the light from the one bare bulb on the ceiling. A chill crept over me. Why wasn't he reacting more. He didn't have to act like a dog anymore. Jack wasn't around. Why wasn't he calling for help? Or thanking me? Or something? Why was he just staring at me through the dog suit? I crouched on the cold cement floor, positioning the bolt cutters across the chain. I'm going to set you free. Hold still. A hand shot out of the dog's chest and grabbed me by the arm. Hey! But the hand only tightened around my bicep. I tried to tug free, but the nails dug into my skin. Let me go! I shouted, but the hand was pulling me in, towards the dog's lifeless, glassy eyes. The plastic nose, the painted mouth. And then I heard something. A whisper. Behind you. I whipped around and my blood ran cold. A silhouette sat perched above the basement's doors, peering down at us. Jack. I grabbed the bolt cutters and squeezed. 
The chain broke in two. The dogman leapt up and, with amazing speed for wearing a heavy costume, bounded up the stairs towards Jack. But Jack was too fast. Before he could slip past, he grabbed the dog by the arms and pushed him back down the stairs. He was still at the bottom. I grabbed the bolt cutters and ran up the steps. In one quick motion, I swung them at Jack. He ducked. You don't know what you're doing, Amir. You don't know the whole story. You're keeping a guy locked in your basement and forcing him to wear a dog costume? I raised the bolt cutters. Amir, just listen to me. He's not who you think he- The bolt cutters hit the side of his head. Not that hard. I wasn't swinging to kill, but Jack crumpled to the ground, clutching his head, groaning in pain. And in that moment, I bounded down the stairs and grabbed one of the dog man's paws. Here, come on, quick! I whispered, pulling at the fake paw. Slowly, he rose. One human hand popped out of his chest, then a second. I helped him undo the clasps on the belly and under the arms. Then the costume slowly crumpled away from him. Then I was staring at an adult man, taller than myself, wearing a border collie mask. But he didn't reach up to pop off the mask. No. He just stood there, absolutely still, staring down at me with those lifeless, glassy dog eyes, plastic brown fur shining in the light. Something about this felt wrong. I backed away, backed up the steps and out onto the lawn. His eyes never left mine. He turned his head slowly to watch me go. And then, when I'd gotten about ten feet from the basement door, he bolted up the steps and ran across the lawn for the woods. But when he got to the tree line, he stopped. He turned around, slowly pulled off the mask, and then he was staring at me, grinning with a smile of yellowed, rotten teeth. Thank you, he whispered, and then he disappeared into the darkness. But I couldn't move, couldn't breathe, because I recognized that face. I'd seen it on the news, a man who'd been convicted of stalking and murdering three women, who then escaped from prison earlier this year. And then the pieces clicked into place. His name, if I remembered correctly, it was Sam Baker. And Jack? He was Jack Baker. Jack slowly pulled himself up, groaning in pain. Amir, he said, staring into my eyes. Did you just set my brother free? And that was My Neighbor Got a Dog. I don't think it's actually a dog. By Blair Daniels. You can, you can find the story on her own subreddit, r slash Blair Daniels, but I originally found it on r slash no sleep. Now, what I, what I really like about this story is it's, it's yet another creepy concept that it's, you don't see an awful lot, which is really good and really refreshing. Uh, the idea is really bizarre because then it, it really makes you break down. Is it, you know, is this obviously some kind of an arrangement they have? It must be because, you know, the, the guy in the dog costume isn't really freaking out or trying to get help or anything. He just seems to be weird right i yeah, there's clearly an arrangement right that's that's what i understand from it it's still weird though it's still really weird is it is it like a kink thing is it like a i i, I don't know i don't know it's it's just creepy which is awesome awesome for a little story like this really really enjoyed it it also made me think of two things uh number one was the film tusk which you know thankfully it's not as horrific as that you know because that that went all kinds of off the rails with how insane turning a person into a thing is. It's, ugh. God, the, the horror behind that film is crazy. If you haven't seen it, but you're squeamish, don't watch it. It's it's dark. It's heavy. It's a lot. It's a fucked up film. Uh, the second thing it made me think of is this, um, it's, uh, it's a Japanese guy. Hang on. My Secret Life is a Kali, Japanese man who transforms into a dog in $15,000 costume, reveals he only does so for special occasions, and none of his friends know about his canine alter ego. But, um, I mean, just like, look at some of these pictures. This is, this is him in that insane $15,000 costume and stuff, and he, he does it every once in a while. It's, it's, it's so interesting. There's even like a little video and stuff. It's just, it's just, it's just like, it's just crazy, you know? And his name's Toko when he's the dog. So, so for all I know, there could have been a lot of inspiration, you know, for the story from, from this. Maybe, maybe not. It could just be a crazy coincidence. Either way, 
still pretty weird. Pretty weird and pretty creepy. Uh, but that's that's just my two cents. Well, I've really enjoyed the story. I hope you did too. We'll see if we'll... God, tongue-tied. We'll see you for whatever's next. Take care.